Hello everyone. So this is yet another video regarding my collection of stereo micro cassette machines. Now I'm I'm actually nearing the the end of my videos because uh, I have made quite a few regarding the ultra portables, but I I I really don't want to show my boom boxes or my home decks because I want to leave that up to someone else, someone else that has these that would be the boom boxes as well as the home decks. I'm pretty sure that they can make a much better video than I can. And also, I really want to focus on the videotape machines because they're, they're really my specialty. I really want to return back to showing videotape machines uh, because um, I, th I think they're a very rewarding uh, hobby to fix videotape machines. I mean, it's, I mean, it's wonderful to hear music, but there's nothing like watching video, moving pictures, moving images. Um, so this video will be recording two machines because um, actually this video is not going to be as long as my others. For example, I will not be showing you the manuals or the specifications for these uh, for quite a few reasons. All right, so let me start with this one. Now this is a machine that I happen to have in my collection. Now this is technically not a stereo machine. This is a mono single channel machine, but I do happen to have it in my collection, but I, because I think it's very, a very special machine because it has both the AM as well as the FM radio built in. I know that there were some Olympus branded machines that were also not stereo, but they had the built in FM radio. It was like an attachment that you can go ahead and attach to, to the bottom of your machine. I don't own that model. I mean, if I happen to find it in the future, I might buy it. Like I told you, I don't own all the models. I don't own all of the brands either. Now, this is from the Sony company, which is actually Sony. They make quite a few uh, micro cassette machines. Probably not as much as Olympus. I, I mean, Olympus, they made a whole lot of machines compared to Sony. But Sony, it, it was kind of like the runner up compared to Olympus. That would be on the quantity of the machines. Now, based on the quality, I mean, that, that's up to you. Now, I have stated the specifications on these machines, so I'm, I'm leaving that up to you, which one you believe is the best. So this is the, uh, the model M305, M305. Now, this is technically not one of my favorites. I do have a few favorites, which I have told you in the past, which are my favorites regarding the ultra portables. Now, this is not one of my favorites, but I do want to make a video about it. Okay, and the other machine that I want to make a video for today is regarding this. Now, this is also not one of my favorites. Uh, it, it is a very beautiful looking machine. It is a metallic house machine, but it is not chrome. It is black. It's a, uh, they call this anodized. It's anodized aluminum. It looks very nice, that dark look. And also that contrast, as you can see right here, we have the the stereo logo as well as the metal logo. And I mean, the contrast between those colors and the black background, it's a very nice contrast. Now, this is technically the model AN slash 100 MC. Now, this is technically part of a boom box, which I do have, but I don't really don't want to show that boom box. It's a very interesting boom box because that boom box has a built in television. Uh, a portable television as well as a micro cassette machine that you happen to be able to remove this part so you can use it as an ultra portable. I have a few of those. Those that would be boom boxes as well as portable televisions that you can remove the ultra portable section from them. So uh, I really want to focus on these two machines in this video. So let me go ahead and like I've done before, let me really focus on these machines. Uh, I've done this quite a few times already. I kind of display quite a few different models and different brands on my table here. As you can see, I have quite a few micro cassettes, but I'm really not going to focus on those in this video. I'm, I'm actually going to go ahead and record a second video after I'm finished with this one. I kind of want to take advantage that I have these machines all out of my storage. Because it, it, it takes me some time to get this setup going. I mean, I have to open up a whole lot of... Um, actually, store these, and that would be... Um, 
lexin cases because lexin it's a wonderful material it's a nice translucent material that lets you see the product but it protects the product from from getting dusty stuff like that so it, it takes me a while whenever i make these videos because i have to remove those machines from those cases so i want to take advantage that i have these machines outside of those cases to make it separate video where i plan to show you these micro cassettes because some of these are type 1 normal bias but some of these are type 4 metal bias and some of them are a very interesting formulation which is called the Angram formulation. It is not brown, it is not black, it is actually a mirror-like silver finish to the actual ribbon. And I wanna open one of these. I'm gonna open one of these, a brand new sealed one, and when I, I wanna show you that ribbon. Uh, not in this video, that would be my next video, but I'm gonna go ahead and record it today. This is Sunday, I don't work today, I do this as a hobby. All right, so let me really focus on this machine. Let me kind of zoom in a little bit more so you can see this very well. I'm actually using my cell phone, my everyday cell phone. I don't use a professional camera. I've said that before. Okay, let me start with this guy. This is the Sony FM slash AM M. 305 that that is the model number now there was quite a few different uh, versions of this machine there was the silver one which is this one but there was also a black colored one actually you'll find the black colored one on eBay right now it's being sold for about uh, that I believe it's about two hundred and sixty dollars somewhere in there I don't really remember I don't really plan on buying that one because I already own one the silver one and then since I told you this is not technically my favorite. I mean, if this happened to be one of my favorites, I would buy that black one for sure. Whenever I find a machine and I really like it, I kind of try to own all of the different versions, the different colors that these came in. But I'm, I'm happy with owning one of these, just one. Okay, so this machine does happen to have a speaker, a built-in speaker. Not all of the Ultra Portables had a speaker. Uh, for example, this one right here does not because actually to be able to listen to this machine through a speaker, you actually insert this onto the boombox. Okay, so this one happens to have a speaker. Another model that happens to have a speaker would be this guy. This is the Olympus SW77. That's the speaker right there. Actually, the speaker on this one uh, it's quite larger than the one on here. On here, I mean, it's probably difficult to see uh, right here, but it is quite small. Uh, the speaker, as you can see, we have a lot of these uh, vents, which makes it seem like, oh, the speaker's pretty large. It's pretty much this size, but actually it is not. It's actually right here on the corner. It's about that size. It's a very small speaker. So you don't really get that much volume out of this machine compared to others that I own that happen to have built-in speakers. Another model that happens to have a built-in speaker is the 1981 released Sony M1000. This one does have a speaker as well. This one is quite loud, much louder than this guy right here. Okay, so another model that happens to have a built-in speaker, um, that would be this guy, the 1982 released Sony M80. Now this is in fact one of my favorites. Uh, yeah, the speaker on this guy, it is quite large. So this one gets quite loud, which is wonderful. Uh, I've actually used this uh, when I work. I work in the electrical field and uh, I have used that guy when I work. It's a very fun machine to use because it's a very easy way to share that music with someone else by using that built-in speaker. All right, so it's wonderful to see that it actually has, that would be a built-in speaker. Now this machine does have a microphone. This machine does allow you to record, uh, which is wonderful. I actually don't make recordings on this guy because it does not make stereo recordings. It only makes mono recordings, which so it's sort of like a step backwards. I, I, I much rather prefer to have a recording that's in stereo. It's a more interesting sound to have that stereo sound, that dynamic sound. 
So I don't actually make recordings on this machine. Uh, as you can see right here, it says mic, but it does not say stereo mic. It only has one microphone. Whenever a machine happens to have a stereo microphone, it, it will have a total of two mics, one for the left and one for the right channel. This one only has one. Okay, right here it says earphone. Notice it does not have an S because it is only mono. If you happen to plug in stereo headphones, you will hear the same thing on both, both ears. It is not a stereo sound. All right, here we have the rewind and the fast forward. It's a single switch that you can move either to the left, like so, when you want to rewind, or you move it towards the right when you want to fast forward. Very simple mechanism right here. Right here, we ha you have your radio dial. That's regarding both the FM and the AM radio. Now, FM radio, technically it is stereo, but since this machine is only mono audio, whenever you select the FM radio, you will hear it, but not in stereo, only mono channel, single channel. As you can see right here, this red button is the recording button. That's the button that you press when you want to record with this machine, which I could, like I told you, I don't really make recordings with this machine. Uh, it is a two-speed system, which is pretty common. That would be the 1.2 centimeter as well as the 2.4 centimeter speeds. We have your volume. Obviously, it goes from 1 to 10. But I mean, this one, this guy, it doesn't really get that loud. I mean, the speaker's incredibly small. I mean, it's nice to know that it has one, but I mean, it's not that powerful. It doesn't output that many milliwatts of output power. Okay, so this has a dual function button. When you press the stop button once, it stops both your playback as well as your recording. But if you press it one more time, it actually ejects your machine, like so, like that. Uh, it's quite a nice mechanism. I mean, it's not that, uh, I mean, on some of these machines, they were built very cheaply. Um, this is not that bad. I mean, uh, okay, let me tell you about the housing. I mean, right away, by looking at it, it's it actually seems like a, it's a metallic house machine, but it is not. This is actually plastic. It is a painted plastic. See that? Uh, that is not a metal sound. It's sort of like a plastic sound. Could it, this is painted plastic, which makes it a little more lighter. It's a, it's a quite a lightweight machine compared to the other aluminum house machines. This is a nice window, so you can go ahead and see your microcassettes when you place those in there. This is the 90 minute ones. I actually buy this from Amazon and you can still buy these guys from Amazon. I like these because you get a lot of runtime. That would be 90 minutes. That's a whole lot of runtime for such a small factor audio cassette. Uh, so when you place your tapes in there, you can actually see the spool spinning and the ribbon right there. It's a very nice thing to see. Obviously, on a modern day machine, there really is no reason to have that window because there really is nothing to see in there. All right, so um, pretty basic machine, not that many things to move around compared to others. Now this machine is technically not metal bias compatible because it does not have a built-in equalizer. So if you happen to place a metal bias cassette in here, which I do happen to have a few, uh, like this guy, I love this guy. I actually bought this from a Russian seller who happens to sell this via eBay. He makes this, these himself. He prints these out. He actually he actually custom spools these micro cassettes with metal bias tape. As you can see right here, we have that dark colored tape, which is synonymous by the type for metal bias. He makes, and, and they're wonderful quality. I believe he uses a silk printing method, which is a very sharp looking prints. Uh, you don't see, for example, the little tiny little dots, the dots per inch. It's a very nice looking uh, cover right here. For example, if I were to uh, play this tape on this machine, which I would, I would love to do, but I really, I don't really want to get in trouble with the whole copyright thing. Uh, this happens to be the wish you were here. See right there, it says wish 
you are here. I love this album, especially the la the first and the last tracks. That would be the um, Shine On, Crazy Diamond. Uh, there's a lot of metaphor in these songs. I happen to love Pink Floyd. It's one of my favorite bands. I, I also have Dark Side of the Moon. Which, I mean, a lot of people consider this to be their favorite Pink Floyd album. Um, I do like it, but I don't really consider it my favorite. Uh, I like it quite a bit, but I don't really consider it my favorite. But that's just me. Uh, so yes, this machine, I kind of tend to deviate with what I'm talking about, but I'll get back to it. This is not metal bias compatible, which sort of like a downside to this. Uh, it's sort of one of the many reasons why I don't consider this to be one of my favorites. For example, whenever I want to listen to these particular recordings, I don't use this machine because if you have a machine that is not metal bias compatible, you're going to get a whole lot of high end, a lot more than you what you would wish to hear. Uh, it, it seems... Uh, it's a very distorted sound. The machine was really not built for that that power. Because believe it or not, when you record onto metal bias cassettes, not only can you record a higher spectrum, that would be more treble, but you can also record more volume, for sure. All right. So this machine, it uses a total of two batteries. That would be the double A size batteries. Um, I no longer use alkaline batteries in the here and now. I actually use rechargeable lithium, which were the, these guys. I love these. I've used these for many years and they just keep going and going. I mean, lithium batteries, they have quite a long lifetime to them compared to, for example, alkaline. I mean, I know there wasn't uh, a time back in the 90s when they would sell rechargeable alkaline batteries but they were very difficult to use because the manual stated that you should never let them die completely you should always recharge them after every single use which was quite of a nuisance because if you actually let those alkaline batteries die completely and then you recharge them there was a very high chance that they they would explode actually the chargers that were sold regarding that concept, that rechargeable alkaline battery concept, they always came with a plastic covering because even the manufacturers knew that there was a chance that they would explode. All right, so this is Sony model number M slash 305, FM slash AM microcassette quarter. When they say quarter, it means recorder. Uh, frequency range that would be regarding the radio it goes from 87.5 to 108 megahertz notice it says 0.5 because actually sony it is in fact a japanese brand and in japan i mean at least back in the days i believe japan no longer uses that would be the analog radio system they now use a digital based system but you can still find the analog radio system in the United States, but we don't really use that 0.5 system like Japan did back in the days. And it also has AM. It goes between 530 and 1005 kilohertz. Yes, 1.5 volts by two, two batteries. Sony Corporation made in Japan. Wonderful machine to own. Okay. So, yeah, there's not many things I want to say about this machine because, I mean, it is, a, it is quite limited on its features. Like, for example, it is not metal bias compatible like others that I own. Um, okay, now regarding the, the, the actual radio, as, as you can tell, this machine does not have that would be uh, extendable antenna. Like these others, like for example, the Sony M80, as well as the Olympus SR11. And since it does not have that extendable antenna, the, uh, the quality of the radio is not the, it's not the best. It kind of struggles to pick up those very faint radio signals. Now that's regarding the radio. 
So it doesn't have like the best radio that was released on such a machine. There were others that had better radio. Like for example, this one has a much better radio for sure. Especially considering the fact that it has the DX tuner. If you're not familiar with the Sony patented DX tuner, it's a wonderful tuner because it can really pull in those very weak, faint radio signals. Uh, this one actually has a radio as well, but that's only the FM radio. Um, now it doesn't have the DX radio, it, it, but it is actually a better radio system than this guy, the Sony M305, for sure. All right, so I think that's it. I mean, okay, let me show you another wonderful thing that they applied onto this machine. When you want to adjust the tape speeds, that would be uh, regarding the 1.2 as well as the 2.4 centimeters per second. You don't even have to open this machine in order to adjust those two settings. All you do is you remove the, the battery cover. I mean, that. How, how much easier can that be? You just remove the battery cover and right there, you have a total of two potentiometers at your disposal. Very wonderful concept. Now, this is actually not the only ultra portable that use that system. I have quite a few others that also have that system. That would be like, for example, this. This is the Fisher PH slash M20. This one also allows you to adjust those two settings by simply removing the battery cover. See, I just removed the battery cover and right there we have those two potentiometers. I love when machines happen to have that setting because believe it or not, that setting, you do have to adjust it in the future because all of these machines, since they're not digital based, since they are based on magnetic ribbon with motors and motors, they don't always spin at the same speed. Whenever motors become older, they, they have wear and tear on them and these speeds tend, they tend to slow down slightly, very so slightly. So you actually have to speed up those motors in the future. Okay, another machine that happens to have that wonderful setting is this one right here. This is the Sony M80. You can adjust those speeds by simply removing the battery cover. And like I told you, right there, you have those two potentiometers. Uh, some people call those pots, P-O-T-S. But those are the parts that you actually spin in order to adjust the speed settings. Wonderful option that they placed on these machines. Like I told you, not all of the machines have that setting. Okay, now when I bought this machine, it was not working correctly because the belt was in fact broken. It was not sticky. Actually, when they become sticky, it, it, it's a lot of work because you have to clean those pulleys very well or else you will not get proper tape speed. You will get a lot of wow and flutter. These kind of speed up, slow down, speed up, slow downs. Okay, so I had to change the belt on this guy. Now, when I changed the belt on this guy, I decided to go ahead and invest in a high quality belt. Uh, you'll find these on eBay. Uh, there's a seller from Europe. He's a European seller. He sells these kits. And it's wonderful because they all have the model numbers right on the uh, package that lets you know what model this is compatible with. Uh, notice this says M405, but believe it or not, the belts for the M405 are the exact same belts for the M305. So I actually bought a kit. Actually, bought it, I bought a few of these because not only is this kit compatible with the Sony M305, it is also compatible with this, this is the Sony M80 from 1982. You can use these belts for that machine, but you can also use it for this machine. So I actually bought quite a few. They come in these wonderful envelopes, nice looking envelopes. It says right here, please do not bend. Sony M405. I have quite a few of these kits. Wonderful. 
if you really want to use a high quality belt i really recommend these these are from the deck tech brand you'll find this on ebay from an european for example if you leave it live in the united states it's going to cost a little bit more to have these shipped to you but it's it's not impossible you have to work with the seller you have to pay a little bit more for that that would be the international shipping all right so that's regarding the belts okay now i've done this in the past where i kind of say repairability how difficult it is to repair this machine I mean, considering the fact that you can adjust those state speeds by simply removing battery cover, I'm going to consider that. I'm also going to consider the fact that the original belt does not become sticky, which makes the uh, that maintenance a lot easier. You don't have to clean those pulleys. Uh, it's a lot of work when they get sticky. You have to clean them very well. You have to do like at least three passes of alcohol on those pulleys to remove all of that residue off of them. Uh, the fact that actually this machine has one of the fewest screws of all of my ultra portables uh, it doesn't have that many to tell you the truth I mean you have two in here in the battery compartment you also have two here in the back um, and you have two right here on the side and that's it by removing those six screws bam you're in here there's not that many screws to remove compared to others. So uh, com uh, considering all of these things, I'm going to give this guy on a scale from 1 to 10, where the 1 is the easiest to repair and 10 is the most difficult. I'm going to give this guy a 4. Now, I have given this one a 1 because believe it or not, these are even easier to repair. There's even less screws to remove compared to this one. I gave this guy a 1, but I give this one a 4, where 1 is the easiest and 10 is the most difficult. So yes, this machine is quite simple and easy to repair. Uh, now, I don't plan to show you the specifications on that machine because it really wouldn't be fair. I mean, it's not fair to compare that machine to these others because these others are able to perform a lot better than this one because of the fact that these others are stereo this one is only mono the fact that these others are compatible with the metal type 4 metal bias tapes this one is not so yes it really wouldn't be fair now i do place this in my collection because i consider it special because it has that fm slash am radio okay so i think that's it for this machine let me go ahead and focus on this guy like I told you, this is in fact part of a boombox, but I don't really want to show that boombox. I'm going to leave that to someone else. I mean, you might have this boombox in your possession. And if you're thinking about making a video about it, please do. I would love to see that video. Now, this is from the Sharp brand. I really like the Sharp brand. I'm going to tell you the truth. Sharp is one of my favorite vintage electronics brands. They performed very well, but they were not that crazy expensive. I mean, there were other brands that were way more expensive than the Sharp brand. But uh, this was a very nice, that would be performance to price ratio. The Sharp branded machines, not only were they very beautiful, they were very good price to performance ratio. Um, now, I don't plan to show you the manual or give you the specifications regarding this machine. I'm going to leave that up to someone else. I just want to show it because you can go ahead and use this like an ultra portable. I do that in the here now. Uh, I don't really use that boom box that much because it is quite big. It is quite bulky, but I like using this as an ultra portable. I carry this in my pocket whenever I go out shopping, when I go out walking. I love walking. Walking is one of my favorite things ever. All right. So this is from the Sharp brand. Uh, it says right here, stereo. So yes, this is in fact a stereo compatible machine. It says micro cassette recorder. Yes, this is also able to record. Right here it says REC, REC, which is short for record. You press this button whenever you want to record. And it happens to say right here, metal. Now, this doesn't mean that the, 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 the actual machine is made out of metal. It means that it's metal bias type 4 
microcassette compatible, like this guy right here. This is from the national brand. There were quite a few brands that made these guys. For example, TDK, also AWA. Um, happened to have this guy. I bought this from the Japanese Yahoo auction store. It was quite expensive. Uh, these range in price between uh, $39 all the way up to, up to, believe it or not, these guys go up to $50 in the hair now because they're quite rare. There weren't many of these made and also there weren't many that survived, especially not sealed like this one right here. Let me kind of show you that. Now, I do plan to make another very detailed video on these guys. Okay, now this does have a built-in microphone. It has a total of two. As you can see right here, it says mic, but it says R as well as L. So you have a total of two microphones. So this is in fact able to record a stereo recording. Um, I don't really use this machine to make recordings because I actually use my home deck. I believe that the home decks, they can do a much better job regarding recording than this guy or any of these right here to tell you the truth. Uh, right here we have the wonderful timer. These numbers would be spinning as you play back or as you record. Let me go ahead and reset that like so. I do use this guy, uh, but not as much as these others. Uh, I do plan to tell you why don't you, I don't use this as often. A uh, very nice looking machine. As you can see right here, we have some gold plated contacts because this is the way that this machine is able to communicate with the boombox. This actually sends the audio signals from this machine onto the speakers that are on the boombox. Like I told you, I don't really plan to show you that boombox. This uses a total of two AA batteries. It has a, it's an interesting system because it does not have the cover on the back. It has it right here on the corner. It has this really tiny cover right here where you place your batteries right in there, a total of two. Okay, now since this is in fact a metal bias tape compatible machine, this does have a built-in that would be an equalizer right here. As you can see right here, it says tape. It says tape, but it also says norm, which is normal. That would be the type one ferric, normal bias, but it also says metal. That would be the type four metal bias micro cassettes. You move this depending on what, what kind of tape you have in here. Like so, it does have a two speed system, which is pretty common. I always try to record in the 2.4. I really recommend that you record in the 2.4 because you will get a much better sounding recording, a higher quality recording. This has a single switch, which you can move either towards the left to rewind or towards the right to fast forward. Uh, and this has this interesting uh, set setup because when you're either rewinding or fast forwarding, it's not enough to simply press stop. You have to go ahead and return this towards the center position. Okay, now regarding auto stop. Now this machine, it is quite new. Actually, this is actually one of the newest machines compared to all of these. This, I believe this was made around 1986. Uh, yeah, these guys were made uh, much further back than 1986. So this was made uh, towards the end of the stereo microcassette uh, life. There were others that were made after this guy, but not many. And I mean, by the time 1989 came around, that was the end. This, this whole concept, the stereo microcassette concept was pretty much abandoned. All of the brands, the companies that made these, they stopped making them. All right, yes, be very beautiful looking machine. Okay, uh, yeah, there's, there's not many things to move around because this one actually does not have the built-in FM radio because the boom box actually had it. You actually use the radio on the boom box, not on the ultra portable section. Okay, um, notice right here, this is the headphones. 
it does have an S. It says phones, plural, more than one. So this allows you to listen to a stereo recording. This is the volume knob. They actually use a very interesting system where it has a volume for both the right channel as well as the left. I don't really know why they would do such a thing. Well, actually, I do suspect why they might have used this. I mean, since, since this does record via separate microphones, there was a way, if you wanted to, to record a, a two monorail that would be single channel audio tracks on a single side of the macro set. For example, you can go ahead and record one thing on the left, but a separate thing on the right. And you, what you would do is you would mute, lower the volume on the side that you did not want to hear and raise the volume on the side that you did want to hear. So technically you could go ahead and record up to four separate audio tracks onto a single micro cassette with this machine, which I've, I've never actually done. I've never had the need to, but it's wonderful to know that it is possible. You can actually mute either the left or the right, and you can also record via separate microphones. Okay, now when I bought this machine, it, it, it was not complete. It was missing, for example, the audio cables. But I was able to find those cables via Amazon. This is via the JND brand. Actually, I've noticed that on Amazon, some of the brands, they don't really last too long. This, all of a sudden, they kind of change names, but it's basically the same product. They kind of rebranded products. Okay, so this is the cable that you have to use whenever you want to record on this machine, which I don't really do that often. Because like I told you, the boombox, I mean the uh, home decks do a much better job than these guys. Okay, so what this cable does, it has a standard 3.5 millimeter stereo jack on one side, but on the other side, you have a total of two 3.5 millimeter monorail single channel jacks what i do is i connect one on the right channel microphone and one on the left channel microphone and then i go ahead and i connect this now i i always try not to make recordings from my computers because i've noticed that computers they tend to create kind of like this line noise kind of like this buzzing sound onto the recordings whenever i make recordings onto this format, the stereo micro cassette format, I always try to use a high-end digital portable media player made by the Creative brand, which I mean, Creative, it's still around, but they really don't make any more uh, portable media players because they've been practically replaced by your smartphones. I mean, if you really think about it, a smartphone is basically a portable media player. So it's, it's sort of like a nuisance that you have to go ahead and find such a odd cable like this to be able to record onto this machine. Okay, now let me tell you, I mean, at least on my opinion, why this is not my favorite machine. I mean, I mean, just by looking this, at this machine, you would think, why is this not your favorite? I mean, it's, it's pretty nice looking, it's pretty portable, it looks pretty premium. Uh, okay, now the reason that this is not my favorite is because it has a built-in system that you are not able to disactivate. It's always active if you want to or not. It actually limits the audio output on both the recordings as well as the playback. Now, I'm not going to say it's Dolby because technically none of the ultra-portable machines that played back stereo microsets had a Dolby system, none of them did. Uh, but some of them had sort of like their old, their own version of Dolby. Um, I don't remember exactly what uh, Sharp called it. Actually, this machine, believe it or not, is actually a rebranded product. You'll find this exact same machine, but it won't say Sharp right here. It would either say RCA or it will say Sears or it will say General Electric. It will be the exact same machine. 
exact same specifications, which I don't really plan to tell you because I really want to let this, uh, I want someone someone else that happens to have this boombox to, to make a much better video than I can. So that system, for example, I really love recording and listening. That would be the metal music, the metal genre. That would be like, a, for example, death metal as well as doom metal. I love those two genres because they have a lot of emotion. They have a lot of power. Actually, those genres, they talk about uh, subjects that no, not, no other genre will talk about or even dare touch. Like, for example, sorrow, death, the unknown. Uh, it's, it's, it's wonderful music. I mean, at least on my opinion. Okay, so regarding that kind of music, they use a lot of electric guitars. And electric guitars, they have a whole lot of high end. That would be high frequency sounds. Treble. So whenever I play back recordings with that kind of music, that would be uh, doom metal as well as death metal. I also like black metal, but not as much as doom and uh, death metal. It limits your sound and you can tell right away when it kicks in. When that system kicks in, it lowers the volume a couple of a couple of decibels and I can really tell when it does that and it's kind of like a nuisance I really don't like it I kind of don't like both the recording and the playback because of that feature that this has there are other machines that don't they don't have that feature especially this guy I mean you can really push this guy I've noticed that when I make recordings on this guy it doesn't care what you're recording it doesn't care if it's loud or if it has a very high frequency sound to it, it's just gonna go ahead and record it. It's not gonna modify it. It's not gonna limit it at all. That's one of the reasons that I really like the audio playback on this guy. And this is quite an old machine. This, this was made back in 1981. This was actually made before I was born. I was born in 1982. This is made in 1986. But I don't really like that setting that was placed in here that uh, limiting setting because it's quite aggressive I mean at least on my opinion that's why I'm going to tell you right now this is not one of my favorites all right so I think that's it regarding this machine now when, when I bought this machine believe it or not it was good to go I mean I did maintain it for example I did clean the uh the audio head with uh alcohol 90 99.9 .9 pure alcohol You'll find the 100%, but it is quite expensive. I use the 99.9% because .9 that's 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 fine with me. I did clean the audio hit. I did relubricate the capstan. I did also demagnetize the head, which I believe you're supposed to do every few hours. I believe it's about 10 hours, but that's up to, that's up to each person. I know some people that they feel like that's unnecessary, but I, I just happen to like it like doing it the original belt that came with this machine it's still in here it still works they use a wonderful material for the belt on this because it still works it's it's not stretched it's not dried out it's not cracked uh, now regarding the torque now actually i'm not an expert i can't tell you how much torque this machine has but it has one of the highest torques of all of my ultra portables of all of these machines that I have here on my table this has the highest amount of torque and you might be thinking well who cares why would you want a high torque setting on a machine well it really helps for example if you're planning to use the 90 minute micro cassette like this guy right here Whenever you have a longer runtime, you will actually have a thinner tape. I mean, just look at that. Can you tell that that's incredibly translucent? You can actually see the, uh, for example, the, uh, the felt, that felt right here, you can pretty much see through it. Let me kind of move it around. See, you can, you can see those uh, reflections coming right through the ribbon because the ribbon that's in here, it's incredibly thin. 
So when, when you use the 90 minute tapes on a machine that happens to have a very a small amount of torque, there's a high chance it'll eat up the tape. For example, I've never had this machine eat up any tapes at all because it happens to have a very high torque, which you really want whenever you use this extended runtime. Actually, I do have the manuals for these machines and some of the manuals, they actually tell you not to use these because the machine was actually not designed for them. They don't have the torque setting to be able to feed such a thin tape. All right, now uh, repairability. Uh, well, maybe I'm the luckiest guy in the world, but I didn't really have to repair this machine at all. It was good to go. I mean, I did maintain it, like I told you. Now, uh, regarding uh, repairability on this guy, for example, if you want to change the speed settings, you do have to open it. It's not like you can just remove the battery cover and get into those settings. They're not in here unfortunately. So you do have to open this machine whenever you want to adjust those speed settings. Uh, the amount of screws, uh, it's quite a bit of screws. Um, I don't remember the exact number because actually I opened this quite a long time ago. I, I believe I bought this about two years ago via eBay. Actually, when I bought this, I actually saw the Sears. They had the Sears, the uh, metallic colored one um, but I didn't buy it because like I told you this is not one of my favorites when I buy a machine and I don't consider it one of my favorites I tend to only keep one I don't really focus on buying all the different colors so I'm okay with only one of these guys made by the sharp but like I told you they were also my, made by General Electric by Sears and by RCA so regarding repairability on this guy, I'm going to give this guy a 6 because it is a little bit more difficult than this guy for sure because of the amount of screws that's in here, because of the fact that you have to open it to adjust that tape speeding, the tape speed setting for sure. Um, yeah, like I told you, no speaker. But it is built into the actual boombox. You actually install it like so. And also, there is no radio on here, but it is on the boombox itself, which I do own, but I really don't want to show that machine. I want to leave that to someone else. Uh, so if you have any questions regarding any of these machines, like I've said before, I would love to answer those questions. And I would love to get those comments. This, I mean, this is wonderful comments. And I mean, at least to me, I, I, I think it was time to show these machines on YouTube in a lot of detail. Uh, like I told you, I don't really plan to tell you the specification on these two guys. I'm going to leave that up to someone else. Thank you so much.